Hello and welcome. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and this is going to be the expedited version of this uh, painting I just completed. Um, 16 by 22 inches and uh, sort of a forest scene. So you got the sped up version here, going to be about 15 minutes, and I'm just going to burble on about uh, whatever, a few insights and things. And then I will go ahead and post up the um, the live version, which is like six hours long. I'm inclined to just post the six hour video because in my experience, the multi parts don't do any, any better. So uh, if you have an opinion, it's maybe not going to be too late to weigh in since I'll be putting this up tonight. and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for you, so be happy to hear. Um, basically, I'm doing my drawing on a, uh, a board that's... Um, this is a bit of laminated MDF. It's laminated with Fijian cowrie, which is a nice sort of tight-grained wood. And uh, I did several coats of uh, um, transparent gesso on it with a tint of uh, burnt sienna. And I had this board prepped for a long time, so... Um, I mean, like for three years, probably since my last museum show, and really the last time I got in any work this size, uh, except for the one that I did on my channel about six months ago, and uh, I knew that that was going to be a pretty easy scene. This scene was a bit more complex, required a bit of simplification, and I had a real plan, which was to have the objects in the distance really fall back. The other plan, of course, was to do a uh, kind of um, a complementary color scheme with the purples and the blues actually going towards the greens and purples up against a yellowish um, distance kind of a morning thing so now I've given it the super original title of forest trail <laughs> I think I'm gonna get call it forest trail morning in hypothesis yeah so you are uh, whizzing through six hours of painting right now with me yeah something like that and not to mention you know all the intermediate uh, well I, I try and capture everything and um, yeah so this is one of the reasons I haven't been putting up that much stuff recently is because I've been working away on this thing and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it I'm pretty happy the way it turned out I think it's a good strong uh, composition and uh, I accomplished most of the things I wanted to do my main goal was try not to get too tweaky with it um, keep it fairly ex expressive uh, the other goal was to um, uh, well, that was my main goal you know really the other goal was to try and keep uh, some loose quality in there you know and um, uh, that kind of goes into the same heading as tweaky so that was probably my main my thing but I have uh, several large boards prepped, and uh, I'm going to give myself a little break. I think I'm going to do like an 8x10 or something, probably tomorrow, and um, and then get right back into another one. So it'll have an impact on the channel in that I really don't feel like... Uh, I have mean, probably some videos. One thing that did occur to me would be to repost some of my other older painting videos that were A, either extremely sped up, like to one or two minutes, or um, B were done very low res, like 480, I think is what it was uploading. You can weigh in on that too, because I don't mind throwing in 15 minute videos, but I haven't had the new material in hand since uh, mostly this is what I've been working on every day. Um, and doing some, some figure stuff. I am going to be doing like a little project for the quarry where I'm going to be painting um, a character from the old movie Freaks, uh, which was from I want to say 1930, 1920 something like that, awesome movie uh, that's going to be for a charitable donation, I do think I'll probably put that up on this channel, so it is M. Francis Painter after all you know, although the the primary thrust has always been uh, landscapes here um, and like I said in the past, I don't know about getting into the natives, but um so, you know, okay, what have I just done? Well, I started laying in some trees with kind of a purple-gray uh, umber kind of thing, and then around them I have put in uh, 
uh, kind of an ochre white, uh, also with quite a lot of gray. And that's working, you know, that's working pretty good. Yep. Um, when you see a big shift in the palette, you know it's a new day. And I think I have like oh, many days into this actually. So, uh, in conjunction with this, of course, I've been, you know, pulling pulling the studio together all the way. And um, I think it's pretty much there. I just bought some new lights the other day. Uh, and it's there. I'm ready. I'm ready for my... I feel like the bride waiting for the groom. <laughs> waiting for my tourists to show. And I don't know uh, when they're going to show. But it's all good. Because, uh, frankly, it's called fine art for a reason. And that that's you, because you do it even if you weren't going to get any uh, remuneration, you know. Uh, although, uh, gosh knows, uh, remuneration is uh, always helpful because we all got the, you know, those pesky bills and stuff. But um, either way, I, I think I have definitely, I would rather sacrifice a level of comfort in my life and be able to do what I do. Um, and that's based on the fact that I was a paid commercial artist for many, many years. So I know exactly what's involved with um, the trade-offs for um, using your, your talent and uh, skill um, for, you know, commercial uh, gain, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm certainly not saying that there is anything wrong with that. But it has a price. There's a price that has to be paid uh, when you do that. And uh, it is uh, multifold. I mean, um, the, the the most aggravating aspect I found was probably not getting sufficient time to do a good job. Sometimes the other uh, really big aggravator was uh, having inane changes made to my artwork by people that uh, were not talented and had didn't have good ideas. Um, and that's because I still loved doing art, even though um, you know. I might have done, you know, been hired to do a picture of a beetle or something, you know. But to me, that was beside the point. The point was that when I set out to do something, I set out to make it beautiful and nice. And uh, I just found it aggravating to have those changes made. And and, and, and the pressures, uh, of course, uh, not, not fun. So glad to be out of that and uh, was making really good money as a commercial illustrator um, if I'd stuck with it I you know it's still but as you probably know if you may not know um, <coughs> time is worth more than money you know anyway uh, enough of that because uh, we've got t space to fill you know now um, if you really want to get in depth with what's he doing what's he doing why is he doing that um, Hey, there's going to be a six-hour live version of this going up. It's going to take probably two days t to render it. <laughs> and then, who knows, another day or so to upload it. So I'm hoping that no crashes occur. It might just not be a very good idea, but I'm going to try that. I, If that doesn't work, then I'll split it into two three-hour bits or three two-hour bits. And... Um, We'll try that, but uh, I might just try for the six hour. We'll see. I'm not sure, you know. Anyway, hope you uh, have been doing well. And um, uh, one thing I kind of wanted to chat about uh, to also is I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, Robert Fripp. Um, I, I don't love every era of King Crimson or whatever, but uh, I love his playing on the Bowie records, and I love that first King Crimson record. And I'm I'm familiar with the early. Um, like Discipline and Beat era uh, King Crimson from the 80s and I, I like it pretty well you know um, but I think he's amazing uh, as a uh, a musician, a craftsperson a artist you know and an intellectual um, and a, apparently quite a, a spiritual guy as well so he's like got it going on and uh, I come across in my YouTube feed a uh, um, a video with a really good interview uh, with him from 1979 and uh, he just recently come out of some sort of spiritual retreat and he was there was a couple statements that he was talking about um, that I wanted to impart to you since you're probably if even if you're not an artist you're interested in art in the 
artistic struggles. So, and one thing he said, uh, the second thing he said that I have still have not watched the whole video, but um, is that uh, art is a destination, and craft is a way that you get to the destination. I thought that was brilliant, just absolutely brilliant, you know, because this came up when the guy says, oh, you're sitting there trying to do your art, and he's like, well, let me stop you there, you know, because he's making an important distinction. Not everything you do is art, you know. Art is the goal, you know, and what you do to get to that goal is, to me, um, it's a trifold, you know. One is you and your intellect, your ego, your will and determination to make something. The other aspect I would just call the universe to keep it, you know, generic. You know, the life force, the the, the, the creative force of, of, of all things, you know. You've got to connect with that. You've got to partner up with that to do anything that's uh, uh, going to be art with a capital A. And by that I don't mean, you know, we know real art when we see it, you know, and um, people that are discriminating do, and people that aren't discriminating aren't watching this channel. So <laughs> anyway, uh, to get there, though, you have to know your craft. You have to have um, worked hard to be able to have the means and, and methods and ability to express yourself. It doesn't come any other way, you know. Maybe s once in a while people might get a lightning strike. And I've seen these people. I've had some of them as students and things, too. And uh, um, they just they drank the Kool-Aid. You know, they believe the modern art um, Kool-Aid story, which is, you know, that uh, art should just strike you from a, as a bolt of inspiration out of nowhere and that you don't have to have any skill or ability and that you just need to have a concept or an idea or... Or just, you know, some colors and start throwing things at a canvas or whatever. It doesn't even matter because it's all um, nonsensical to keep this, um, you know, channel strictly um, profanity-free. It's nonsensical. It makes no sense. And um, if you want to get to art with a capital A, you need to spend a lot of time practicing your craft. You need to make a lot of uh, mistakes. You need to make a lot of bad paintings if you're a painter. If you're a musician, you need to hit a lot of bum notes. If you're a musician, you need to get to the point where if you want to express yourself, your hands just know where to go. You know, And that takes a, lo a lot. And I do a lot of music. And I have to say, I'm sort of there with the entire uh, computer and the digital audio workstation environment would be, the whole thing would be my instrument, and I put a lot of years into learning how to use it in an expressive way. Um, but I don't play an actual instrument all that well. I play some keyboards, and uh, mostly it's my ear and my aesthetics, and uh, the fact that I've put thousands and thousands of hours into producing and creating music, you know, so I put the time into the craft, and the art shows up for me, you know. Um, with the painting, it's you know it's doing those it's doing those bummer paintings, it's doing those studies, it's doing um, the drawings, you know, it's all adding up. And in the absence of that, say you're on the uh, you've drank the fine art uh, the modern artist Kool Aid, um, maybe you've actually sat down and you did something that was pretty cool, you know. How are you going to follow it up? Well, you just hope the inspiration hits you again, and if it doesn't, I can tell you what transpires because I've seen it time and time again and it's theft usually you just lift something from someone else to put in the time and uh, you just borrow it you know and oh, don't get me wrong I'm not saying there's anything wrong with borrowing from other artists um, especially if you're doing studies you know <coughs> especially if what you're doing is an influenced by that kind of thing I think it was about four or five months ago I did a study that was of the River Seine uh, in Paris and um, or close to it actually uh, the Fontainebleau Forest in this case and uh, I did it in the style of Corot 
And it doesn't look exactly like a Corot, but I knew I was thinking Corot. I knew what I was doing, and I think I called the painting, you know, painting in the style of Corot or whatever. It wasn't a study. It was an homage, right? Anyway, we're getting kind of close to the end here, and you're seeing the um, the finished painting. And uh, I could have kept tweaking on it, and in the live version, you're, you'll, you'll hear the full uh, struggle. And it's interesting for me right now because it's about uh, th three feet away from me, this video, and I'm looking at it. It's about, you know, a half inch high by two inches wide. So I think it looks okay. It looks pretty good. I, I definitely can see some other things I'd like to do to it. Um, but r namely, get it in a frame because I really would want to. I got to live with it for a while, and then I may do some more. We'll see. Anyway, I'll be back real soon with another video. Sorry for the wait in between videos, and stay tuned for the longer version or versions of this. And meanwhile, take good care. Stay out of trouble, trouble, and appreciate you. Appreciate you coming around.